farmland. Binibili po ng mga malalaking developer at ginagawang commercial at residential land. Ano pong ginagawa ng DA tungkol dito? Alam nyo, I, we are, that's our business. Ah, I want to ba? tell you that we don't buy agricultural land in the provinces. Nobody will buy houses in agricultural land. We only buy in cities and capital towns ah, because the, the buyer of houses, they want also uh, as, uh, uh, an opportunity that if they're, they're having financial problems, they can resell their houses. And you know, it's very hard to resell houses in in not in cities or capital towns. I'm so from Isabela we, po. We limit ourselves in cities and capital I'm towns. I'm from Isabela po. At mm. marami po akong may bibigay sa inyong ebidensya, proof, na mga farmland na convert po sa subdivision. But in Kaya nga po yan ang dahilan kung bakit ko gustong may pasa na po yung National Land Use Act. That's in cities and capital towns. But I don't think in the... In the, well, in Isabela, uh, in, in, the, in ano, Isabela po, there will be like that. In Kawayan, Isabela po, Kawayan City, Isabela, may mga farmland po doon na nakonvert eh, na po. is a city. Regardless, oh. ang pinag-usap pa po natin, yung mga farmland uh, po na nakonvert na po sa isang subdivision o commercial. But they allow that in cities and capital they towns. They po, allow conversion in po. cities and capital towns because if they buy your land, they buy it expensive and they you can reinvest the money and you will make more money than planting on those lands. Okay. I remember we have, uh, when I was young, we have a uh, 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 chicken, a big chicken farm in Muntinlupa. But Muntinlupa became a six so we finally develop our chicken farm because it it is eight, eight hectares. We will make more money than in uh, far in farming. So it's it's an investment decision for these people. If somebody will buy your land at a bigger amount, maybe uh, you can sell it and buy another land in, that is cheaper somewhere else and build your farm there. Oh. I think mami. it's the thinking of this. You have to to understand uh, agriculture as a business also. Oh, I'm not a businessman, but I can understand agriculture, ma'am. To sell your land at a higher price and be able to buy a bigger piece of land with that same money in a uh, less prime places, then you will do it. Kaya so nga po, ito pong tanong ko po sa ating mga taga-DA. Ano po ang ginagawa nila sa ganitong nangyaring masamang sistema na paliit na paliit it's, po ang ating farmland? Sorry po, madam, ha? Yeah. Na hindi lang po sa Kawayan, sa Isabela, I, I, kundi sa marami po mga probinsya na marami na po mga subdivision na nagsilipa na... And where will the people live if you don't build subdivisions? Marami po mga lugar na pwede pong pagtayuan ng subdivision. Huwag lang po i-take over yung mga farms. Kasi nga po, kuminsan yung mga farmers, dahil sila po ay nagihikaos, they're being taken advantage of. No. Lalo na po, meron tinatawag na rice tarification. So, mura po yung mga bigas na dumarating dito, they cannot compete. And then, papasok po ito mga negosyante at mag-offer ng pera para bilhin ang kanilang mga lupain. Of course, walang choice po yung mga farmers. Mm -hmm. Kung hindi, ibenta na lang kanilang lupa sapagkat meron na po tinatawag na rice tarification. I wrote the rice tarification ah, law. Yun? You know, uh, we wrote the rice tarification law because in, 20, in 2018, uh, the price of rice rose to almost 50 to 60 pesos per kilo. And that is the only time President Duterte became unpopular because rice is a, a political crop. When nagmamahal ang rice, nagiging unpopular ang president. And uh, the World Bank, we signed that WTO agreement in 1995, and they gave us 25 years to be competitive, but we failed to be competitive after 25 years. And if we don't open the lib or liberalize the importation of rice, they will bring down our credit rating. And we have plenty of loans abroad, and we have to pay higher interest for those loans, so it will be a loss to the Philippine government. So what I did when they asked me to, to write the rice tarification law, I gave all the money from the collection of rice tariff 
to the small farmers. 10 billion for the Rice Competitiveness Enhancement RCE. Fund, 5 billion for mechanization, 3 billion for seeds, 1 billion for loans, 1 billion for training. And anything above 10 billion that was collected, it was given to the rice farmers owning 2 hectares and below, 5,000 each, 1.6 million farmers. So that is 8 billion. So a total of 18 billion, which is the collection of the rice tarification law na rice tariff. Alam ko po I yan. don't feel any guilt to the small farmers. All the money that came from the rice tarification law were given to the small farmers owning two hectares and below. So how do we identify those small farmers? Paano they have po na, a list. Do you have po a list? They so paano list. po ninyo pinipili ng DA? No, they have paano, a list. I know po. Paano po pinipili uh, kung sino po ang maging recipient nitong pera na galing po sa rice tarification. How uh, are they, they being identified? They have a list of farmers owning